Welcome to Mindset, where we journey through the realms of mind and body to unlock the full potential of human wellness. Join your host, Alex Muir, as we explore transformative health hacks, debunk myths, and empower you with knowledge straight from the experts. Dive into each episode ready to flex your mind, body, and soul, because your ultimate well-being journey starts right here. And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. In today's episode, 114, we're going to be speaking with the founder and CEO of Fighting is Easy, Coach John. Coach John Luda Kumper. John, appreciate you coming on the Mindset Podcast. Super pumped that uh, got to connect with you and uh, was referred to you from, uh, from Anthony. So I'm super stoked to have you on trying to have more people on that are in the health and wellness space, you know, talking about building a a better body, but while we're building a better body, we're also trying to, you know, optimize our mind. Right. And the way that you do that is in a way that's, you know, building mental toughness and physical toughness through your, your coaching Academy for mixed martial arts. So welcome to the show. Happy to have you on and let's dive right in. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I do this all the time. This is what we do in Muay Thai to say, it's a greeting and it's also a thank you. So I appreciate Absolutely. it. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm glad to be here today. No, totally. And then um, how did you come up with the slogan? Life is, life is hard, but fighting is easy for your, uh, for your business. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a story there. It's a long story, but I'll shorten it up a bit. Um, so I started in martial arts when I was very young, when I was about seven years old. Uh, my parents saw that I had a lot of energy but I also had a lot of like aggression or like anger and stuff like that. Um, So they tried different things, but martial arts was really the only thing that would like get me to follow directions. So get me on the straight and narrow path. So I did anything from, so I started in karate, Taekwondo. I got my second damn black belt. Um, Then I went to Muay Thai. So I found Muay Thai in college at the same time that I found, um, I was in school for mechanical engineering. So I would say martial arts, Muay Thai kind of got me through school. So then I went on. So I projected my life to be like, I was going to be a professional fighter. I was going to travel to Thailand. I was going to do all this stuff. And then uh, I got hit with a big concussion. And like, you know, there's like a fork in the road where you can go either two different ways. So that thing it took me out of training for a year um it took me out of almost everything like i had vertigo i had all these different symptoms that i was trying to like fight through to get back to training but it just wasn't happening so i switched to coaching but through the tough times i came up with that expression life is hard fighting is easy wow and then yeah yeah so switch to coaching wanting to spread what i learned from martial arts to other people and that was i'd say that was around 2012 so i retired from fighting officially around 2012 and then i started this started with a like a t-shirt just like this t-shirt brand yeah i love that yeah that's awesome so like how long would you say you were fighting for uh fighting for in your fighting career versus when that you made that shift because so yeah because we're in 2020 so 12 years with as fighting is easy right Co- coaching academy and then before that since age seven so was it like 15 years of fighting or 10 years of fighting or yeah i mean before so officially like muay thai um i did around seven years but before that i did a bunch of different tournaments like i did taekwondo tournaments karate tournaments so i mean i probably from like age 10 i'm 41 now wow so from age 10 i've been in there just trying to test my you know my it's all martial arts is all about testing yourself yeah yeah not so much like the other guy they're gonna come in do what they do but you're in there to test yourself and that's always what i wanted to do yeah i love that and when i was watching some of your uh content i was like and you're teaching this young guy you look like he was God, like 15 or really young, really young. Yeah, and just yeah, you're, yeah. you're like, you know what you're doing. Like your technique is like, I'm like, holy smokes, because, and I like how you also had a piece of content on, cause where you're from, right. In New York, um, like 
there's been a lot of violence. There's been a lot of like, um, especially even more so since COVID, I feel like, because people are just, they're, they're down, they're depressed, they're upset, they're angry. Um, and people are taking out all that frustration on other people. But a lot of times they're, they're doing it not for any specific reason. Like usually there's motive. Usually there's like a reason behind it, but, or they've got, they've got a lot of underlying issues going on. But in this case, once when, when you were showing me some, or when I was looking at some of your content, there's been, there was like people that were like hitting women randomly on the streets. And, yeah. and then, so then you had a class, it showed like a, someone had the camera and then you were in your class and you're teaching like self-defense for women, which is huge. Yes. Um, so yeah, why don't you speak a little bit about that and like how that, that um, training and those classes that maybe help some people that are, you know, trying to defend themselves if they're walking alone at night or, or like the buddy system, right? How you're encouraging the buddy system and like, you know, um, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, New York is like you said, since the pandemic has been, has been crazy. Um, I'm that came straight from the news that in those incidents you were talking about. So women guys were just going around, I think mixture between just being no outlet since like the pandemic, people have been stuck inside and then people, I don't know, feel like they're controlled by whatever authority they think they're controlled by. And they just didn't have an outlet. So they decide let's record ourselves just punching old people or punching ladies or you know these Man. are people that can't defend themselves yeah like uh but there's there's something there's some people that are you know they're just off there's yeah always been like that in new york yeah um you know people on the street you just leave them alone normally and you know they'll they'll yell but they'll leave you alone yeah um if you feel uncomfortable you know stay with your go to a group of people yeah, or like you said, buddy system or walk to the other side of the street. But there's there are those people out there that just want to cause like violence and mayhem. And you got to learn how to defend yourself properly against those kind of people. Yeah, because yeah. like um, there's a it's like, uh, you know, the, the pandemic caused a lot of extra fear um, and people that are like, let's say, already introverted. <clears throat> it, it, it caused them to go into more of a shell um, and they felt more isolated and maybe even more helpless. So I feel like <clears throat> learning how to defend yourself, learning how to fight. Um, like my dad taught me and he was like, he taught me more boxing. Oh, good. good, and, good. Um, and, but he said, he's like, like the most powerful thing, like these are the most powerful thing. If you know how to use them, they're absolutely like, they can wreak havoc on someone's life. Like, yeah. but uh, you want to do it in the right way. You want to do it. Like you're only, you like my, he's like, Alex never go. You'll never have to go looking for trouble. He's like, I don't want you to, right. you'd be going looking for trouble. He's like, trouble will always come looking for you. And if you know how to defend yourself, right. It's, it's a weapon. Like your fists yeah. are a weapon. And like, I know there's like guns and stuff like that. Uh, gun violence as well, which is a wholly, totally different topic, but, um, but when like young kids are learning how to defend themselves and they know how to use their fists, it's like, it's a whole different level. Right. So, um, so yeah, no, like, so using these, yeah, 100%, but also like using yeah. your brain, using your mind, so, like, yeah, those street smarts way, way different than, you know, what you learn in college yeah, or whatever. So you gotta like, especially in New York, you gotta keep your kind of, they say, keep your head on a swivel. Yeah. Not to say you got to be paranoid all the time, but you just you just got to look around. Yeah. You just got to make sure that you're safe. But the other thing is just what martial arts brings, what self-defense brings is a level of confidence that I see a lot of people like lacking. Like, I, for example, one student came in to me like he was he always thought everyone was picking a fight with him um, just because, like, they were looking at him. And what I'm trying to show him is that are they picking a fight with you or are you like, is it in here or is right. it, is it up here? Right. So once you, once you have that confidence, once you can say like, yeah, I can walk the streets and like, I can use these if I need to, but if I don't need to, you know what? I got, I got the confidence. Um, I don't got the ego. That's another thing in New yeah. York is ego. The guy yeah. brushes by you or something like that. All of a sudden you want to fight him. 
<laughs> yeah, it's not it's not not picking a fight with you because he brushes by you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I feel like I feel like uh, a lot of young men when they're um, when they're younger, like uh, maybe you you went through some stuff. You have a chip on your shoulder. Um, you're trying to navigate life, and maybe you didn't have guidance from a uh, mom. You maybe in the household you didn't have a dad or you didn't have a mom or or both um so i feel like there's a lot of uh down or upset or depressed yeah. men that they just like 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 yourself like if they have a, a father like figure that comes into their life or it's just giving someone that's giving them more guidance it's like hey yeah. i see this emotion that you have if you channel it in the right direction it'll send you on a way better path than the one you're you think that you're going on that's you think it's a path, but it's not a path. It's it's going to send you in the wrong direction. So yeah. I feel like young adolescents right. and young kids, if they can get into, yeah, like sports super early on, doesn't matter what it is. Um, yeah. Not something necessarily. Be, I mean, I, I've always been kind of that obsessive mentality. Like once I really like something, I'm like, I'm like, I like it. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> or, or conversely, I'm like, if I don't like something. I don't like it at all. I'm like, I'm not doing it. So yeah. That, but, that was me 100 yeah. percent. So maybe. having having an outlet, a healthy outlet, especially when you're joining a, like a training academy, like it's such a like when I joined the boxing, I didn't even do it for that long, but it was like I was drenched from head to toe. It's the yeah. best thing for a young man. It's the best thing for That's a young it, woman, man. right? It's like to just go in, dive into your training, like follow a regimen. And it's so good for you, right? Like kind of that military style training, but you're in a supportive environment, right? Where everyone's exactly. watching, watching out for not one another. And and not only does you build confidence in here and in here, but then when you leave, that confidence stays with you and then it can be built in other areas. So I yeah, feel like that's no. what you're trying to do with your academy is like, you know, build build people from the ground up from where they're coming from. And then giving them those life tools that, hey, like life is it's not easy. It's hard. No. Yeah. But but with the training in our academy, in your academy, it'll it, it build, it's going to be building better human beings for the future. Yeah. And no, you hit it right on the head. And especially so not only is it important to find a school, but you got to find the right school. So if, if you're going to an academy and you feel like the instructor just doesn't mesh well with you find another place to do your research, go online, find the right martial art for you. That's another thing. Like there's so many different martial arts out there. Um, you can do anything from like, I mean, I've trained older people, even in Muay Thai, but then there's softer styles like Tai Chi, where if you just want to, you know, move your body and like, just learn how to, to connect kind of your mind and body, similar to yoga, there's martial arts to do that. But then there's a community you know, you join the right Muay Thai school. If you want to go in and fight and test your limits and get in there, you just got to know what you're getting into, right? So the right coach or the right crew, which they call crews like a master, yeah, they will steer you in the right direction. And they will channel all that energy that you that you have, that you think you need to go out. They'll say, like, my coaches were always adamant about not fighting outside of the gym. They would say, we don't care about your ego. We don't care about any of that stuff you got going on. If we catch you, if we hear you fighting, yeah, you're not allowed to fight. No. So you can't go in there. Um, you can't get your license. You can't get sanctioned to fight. And they'll just pull you. Yeah. Because, again, like it's a weapon, right? And yeah. if you Same use thing it the wrong with, way, it's not good. So yeah, got to be used in the right like, environment in the right way. Yeah, drugs and alcohol as well. Like they find that you're because it, it's kind of like I would fight going in to a fight as like a, a sprint for like two to three minutes straight with very, very let rest in between, but also having to guard yourself from attacks and then projecting to know what to do in the future, like kind of like human chess. Yeah. Yeah. So Fighting is like human chess. Yeah. Yeah. And to do all that all at once and come out winning, you got to be sharp. So if you're like, a, you can be a hobbyist, but if you're a hobbyist, I'm not putting you in the ring to fight. You know what I mean? 
your yeah. safety is like is number one. Yeah, because you because you've been doing it so long, like you know if someone, uh, yeah, like when they're not prepared or they're not mentally there, because you got to be you got to be physically there, but you got to be even more so mentally there, like because like you said, it's like you got to think steps ahead of where their attacks are gonna are coming from and where they're going. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It, there is there's a lot to it. It's a lot more than you know fans they just see on the tv and yeah i hear them they're like why don't you just why are you hugging each other it's just yeah. funny things that people say sometimes yeah and there's can you can you elaborate on your two-step approach show up and do not quit how, how do these principles apply to everyday life because i know that's yeah. a big big part of your coaching academy yeah so in training like like the obvious one is show up to training. So if you're not there, there, there better be like an emergency going on. So showing up to training, but showing up as your best self. So that's the rest of it. So you show up, you give your best in training. You, you hit the pads as hard as you can. You're like, you're doing your cardio, you're doing everything, you're doing your sit-ups and everything. There's that. But then you got to take that aspect and then, you know, if you have an office job, you got to show up there too. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm training 100% and then not show up there because there's, there's a balance and, and don't quit. So you can, you can lose, right? You can fail at something. So business is a big, you fail all the time in business. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's not an easy thing, but you only really, really fail if you give up. So quitting like there's just no word if a person says i can't right then i'm gonna be like you're two steps from like heading out the door because that doesn't exist it's hard right you're gonna try you're gonna try your best if you don't make it to i don't know if i tell you to do 100 crunches and you make it to 90 like you're gonna take a break you're gonna come back and do the next 10 because yeah, yeah. so that's it show up don't quit. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then it's, te it's teaching everyone in your academy, like, everyone, everyone's got more gas in the tank than they think, like David Goggins, yeah. right? Like, he, he, he says it in an extreme way, which I don't agree with everything he said, but he's next level, he's next, next level. Yeah. But, but I get where he's coming from when he's like, everyone underestimates how much more they can give. Right. And sometimes it just takes the right person like yourself to be like, no, 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 you've got, I know you've got more in you and just saying it like this, let's, let's, let's see what you got. Take a little breather. Let's, 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 let's get those last 10 to 15 reps in or five reps in. And then, yeah. and then they know that they can do it, right? Like they just, you know, you could be absolutely sore and in pain, but um, you give yourself that little bit of extra rest and then it's like, holy, oh, wow, I, I can do it. I can do it. 100%. Yeah. I learned those things I, I did in my training regimen, I did a couple of marathons. Whoa. And yeah, yeah. So you, when you hit that wall in running, that's exactly where you are. Your brain is telling you all kinds of stuff. Like, why did you do this? Like, we're done. Um, just, <laughs> just stop. Just walk. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Right. Let's go. Just, let's go back home. But then you just, you push through and it might be just another like half a mile, might be another 10 steps. That's another thing like David Goggins said. He's just like, just 10 more steps. There's 10 more steps. There's 10 more steps. And then you keep going and you break through and all of a sudden you feel like, you feel great. You feel amazing. And then you hit the finish line and it's, yeah. Yeah. It's same, it's, yeah. They have those endorphins that you get, right? Where, yeah, like you said, you're hitting that mental wall. So like, what are when you're hitting the mental wall, let's say in the gym or when you're doing that, was this a full marathon or a half marathon that you did? Um, I did, I did two, uh, two fulls. Uh, oh, I did yeah. like seven or eight half marathons and then a bunch of other like five and 10 Ks before that. But for me, it was always cross training towards right. the fight. To right. so me, I'm like, I gotta one lose, lose weight because I was about. 160 pounds and I needed to fight at 140 or 145. Wow. So I was 
weight cutting is a whole nother thing yeah in yeah. fighting we could talk about but yeah so that was always part of it and, and i was in my head i'm always like there's another guy out there he's training harder he's training harder he's training harder he's training harder and they're coming in to you know kick your butt i don't know if you can curse on this podcast but you go ahead yeah <laughs> well, he, they're coming in to kick your ass yeah pretty much and my coach has always said if you lose this fight because you didn't do enough stamina work you didn't run enough that's the easiest thing it's easiest but it's the hardest it's hard when you're doing it but it's easy to do you just get out there and run yeah you know, like we don't care how far you just run every yeah. single day yeah and yeah, that's yeah. what i did and that's that's why stamina you know if you saw any of my fights man i went in there like a freaking i tried to go in there like a bulldozer and just like steamroll my opponents down are they are they uh do you have your fights some of your fights uh for sparring in the um like on youtube or just on your instagram or so they're on my youtube but okay. this they were done so long ago um, yeah my fight name was luda because i had a big afro back then oh like yeah chris yeah, yeah yeah so if you put in john luda yeah you will find you'll find some of my fights up there awesome i have to see some of those because i've seen like you're training others but yeah well, i definitely want to see some of yours as well yeah yeah that's awesome and then um we talked we yeah we already talked a little bit about like how combat combat sports and sports in general builds builds confidence in and outside the ring um how do you how do you believe combat sports can improve overall health and quality of life as stated in your mission yeah so health like if you start something like Muay Thai, you're using every single part of your body. Um, when you see the Muay Thai, like Thai fighter, throw a kick, there's th you're using everything from like the tip of their toes to the core to everything. You throw, try throwing a hundred kicks on the bag a day, and you'll you'll see very quickly how much you sweat, how many calories you start to burn, and on top of that, with Muay Thai, you are going, like, you're working really hard. Even in the class, you're working really hard. But then all of a sudden, an hour goes by, and you're just, you're not even thinking about it anymore. You're going to get tired. Like, you're going to, you're going to feel it. But you're having a lot of fun, and you're learning a new skill. So there's all this happening, and then you're like, oh, man, an hour went by, and you might check your watch, and like, what was 700 calories burned or something? <laughs> so... That's the, the physical aspect. Um, the mental aspect, um, I mean, you're always learning. Like, even 20-plus years training Muay Thai, I learn new things from my students all the time. So I might learn something for someone who came fresh off the street, right? So this is how, like, somebody who's not trained might do something, like. Right? Because mm. you know, when you do something for a long time, boxing or Muay Thai or whatever, you kind of get into this systematic way, and then others are training like you, so you're kind of used to this thing. You go to a whole different school, or you train somebody who's not trained at all. They're gonna do some things, and you're gonna you can't be like, oh, that's against the rules, you know, <laughs> on the street if you're defending yourself. Like you gotta know. So you're always learning, and. Um, quality of life. Um, it, for me, like I would say martial arts and being married, like I'm, I have a family as well. So my family, main reason why, like I started all this, but martial arts, like saved me from going in a different direction. Like there's many instances where I could have, you know, started something with this person that was like talking to me like talking shit to me and I could have been like, Oh, I'm just going to knock him out right now. Right. And I feel good in the moment, but then is it worth it? Cause then they could sue you. Yeah. Then you're going to, they're going to pull you to jail. Then they might pull my, um, cause like in, I'm ranked as a crew in Muay Thai and also a second Dan black belt in Taekwondo and jujitsu. I've been doing that like close to 10, 11 years. So they're going to look at me and they're going to say, hey, 
you got all these skills. Why are you beating people up? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. they're not going to look at the other guy. The other guy might be 200 and something pounds. Yeah. But, but they're going to Google my name and they're yeah. going to see it right away. So Yeah. Because you have all that knowledge, right? Yeah. 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 No, so, totally. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like knowledge is, is power, right? And when you, when you, yeah. especially when you have got knowledge in, in boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, like it's, yeah, it's a skill. It's a life skill that you can uh, have with you for the rest of your life, right? And, yeah. And once you learn it, you, you know it. And yeah. So, yes, yeah, there's also, there's also an awareness that it brings. Like there's the knowledge of when not to engage. So like yeah. weapons are a good, I, it's a good example of that. Somebody's brandishing a pistol and I have all these martial arts skills that doesn't give me the, that doesn't give me the knowledge to, to disarm a weapon. Right. So yeah. there's, there's sometimes you just got to know like, Hey, um, yeah. is it money you want? Right. Can I get home safely? That's, yeah. That's one of the main things I teach in self-defense. Like you got to get back to your family. You got to get back home safely, right? You don't want to just engage in this unnecessary altercation. No. Yeah. But sometimes. Get... Yeah. You have to. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. No, for sure. And um, mm, yeah. So, who or what inspires you to continue coaching and spreading your message? Oh, so yeah, I mentioned, so my family, that's yeah, like, my main motivator. Yeah. That's my main motivator. Um, but outside of that, I think it's my belief, like my mentor, my, um, unknowing mentor was Bruce Lee. I looked oh, up yeah. to him, not only for the fact with his sidekicks and his just martial arts were just above anyone I'd ever seen before. But he was able to take that knowledge to like Hollywood all the way from from China and spread it to so many people. And then if it wasn't for him, like over here in the West, we wouldn't really know about Kung Fu the way we know about it now. They say like he was the original like mixed martial artist because he'd take different styles and blend them and then say be fluid about things. So... Yeah. um. My my thing outside of my family is to have as many people learn some kind of martial art. It doesn't have to be Muay Thai, but some kind of martial art, some kind of self-defense. And I just want to reach as many people as I can with that. I love that. Yeah, like global global reach, like let everyone know like the possibilities, right? Behind learning self-defense and and navigating through life's uh, trials and tribulations. Yeah, and also to take away the just martial art is just a violent thing. Yeah. Because yeah. they, they used to call it, like, when the UFC started, they just, like, labeled it human cockfighting. Oh, God. And <laughs> yeah, they they just said, uh, I mean, it was it was brutal back then, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Have you seen them? Like yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen. I'm like, oh my god! Like they were going in there to kill each other. Like yeah, like literally. Yeah. And so, it's it's a, definitely gotten a lot better because before, it, like when I was looking at you know back then versus now, let, let's say whatever 80s and 90s fighting versus now, it's like there's. I feel like there's a lot more way different. Yeah, way way different. There's a little bit. There's a, definitely a lot more respect. Like people people know like how brutal like you can hurt someone and it's not it's not about hurting the other person it's about it's about fighting for yourself fighting for your family like it's a, it's kind of a different i feel like it's a different mentality yeah yeah i mean the, yeah there there is a level of like you have to be i say a little bit different to yeah, go in there you do you do yeah and yeah yeah it's not a thing when i was in the fight game um all I would do and think about was just fighting. So, you know, tr I trained with my team, but we were like a family. So we'd go, go to the um, bars on the weekends or we'd go support each other for fights. So there was that community there. Um, but we, we all knew like we had each other's backs. 
and everything like that. Um, but with like when we go out to watch UFC fights, like we know what was going on. Yeah. Other people might not. And yeah. we'd be the ones that were sitting there kind of like with our waters, not drinking that much. And then seeing like stuff happen around us, like people getting into fights for no reason. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just because there's a fight going on. I remember hearing about that too. Like that uh, from time to time, like when there's a fight going on, then it gets people, some people riled up and they actually want to yeah. fight. It's yeah. just like, it's like, I don't, I don't understand that. I'm like, like, just cause I want to watch you know, something semi-violent doesn't mean I'm a violent person. It just means, you know, you, it's just, it's, it's just, it's a sport. It's like, a, yeah, it's like something that you want to watch. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to gladiator days in Rome. Yeah. yeah. People used to gather and, you know, watch people. Yeah. Watch gladiators watch people, kill each other. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So in a way, in a way we haven't really, we, we've progressed, but people still want to see, controlled violence they in do. a control in a controlled environment a controlled environment so it's like yeah it's like you said it is human cockfighting to a to a degree but uh a but it's, degree, it's, but... Mu it's much more controlled and they yeah, yeah. They, they have gotten a lot better this yeah there's weight classes there's rules yeah a lot more rules now yeah um i watched some interviews with some of the old ufc guys and oh yeah they, and, you know, they say, like, oh, you guys have gotten soft over the years. <laughs> but <laughs> from from me, like, coming from where I had a concussion and it, like, completely changed my life, I'm all for protecting, like, especially my students. I got two two guys that are going to do their first fight coming up in September. So wow. I got to make sure that they're ready, that they train yeah. safely. Yeah, but they they also have that that aggressiveness to go in there and because it's not yeah there is a level to it like it's not a game when you get in no. there like no. they're kicking you and punch you in the head yeah they're hitting you you know but that's why I said you got to be different <laughs> yeah yeah you got to be able to be able to take that uh, brute force and someone like coming at you from every single angle so. Yeah, and yeah. still be able to maintain some kind of composure while you're doing yeah. that. Yeah, because it could yeah. be like like flurry of punches and kicks coming from every which direction, and yeah, you got to be able to defend yourself. So, yeah, so you, you know, like the fight or flight kind of mentality. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So most people they have that fight, freeze, fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, so when I'm like when I'm teaching self defense and people don't know, that's the first one of the first things that I teach them. I'm um, like, what happens if you get into a situation, like say I put you on stage right now in front of a thousand people and you know, the fear of public speaking, like, Oh yeah. Are you yeah. going to get into it? Right. Or are you going to run away or are you just going to freeze there? Yeah. A lot of people like they'll freeze. And that's kind of what happens when you get hit in the face. Yeah. Like, along with a lot of pain. Yeah. So you're either going to be like one of the people you get hit and you're going to hit them back. Right. And then it's full fight mode. Yeah. Or you're going to be like, boom, ah, oh, that hurt. I need to get away. Yeah. So you're going to try to escape or you're going to freeze up. And that's not something I want for anybody. Yeah. Because you, you, you can't do anything at that point. And these uh, fighters of yours um, that are going to be, uh, so they, are they going to be fighting for the first time this month? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, okay. it is this month. We're in September, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's going to be wow. this month. Yeah. Tell me how that goes. Uh, uh, is it like mid-September or like next week or? No, no, no. End of September. End so of September. Like, okay. So they yeah. still got some more time to train and stuff. I be yeah, How, old are, the, how old are these kids? Um. So one is mid-20s. Okay. Um. The other guy is like 34, 35. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because I'm 31. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. In any age, right? Yeah, it's never it's never too late. It's yeah, never too late. So, but that's all the time we got for today, there, John. I would love to do a part two, part three, expand on our uh, on our interview and go way more in depth into the other questions. So, where can our listeners find you, um, and connect with you? So they could find me on my website, fightingiseasy.com. So that's all one word, fighting is easy. Um, my Instagram and TikTok are the same. 
Uh, I mostly post on Instagram, so they could find me there. From my website, they could just go, jump straight to the number at the top of the page, and they can contact me. So I've been doing um, classes, but also I will come to you. I'm located in Astoria on Steinway Street, like you mentioned, but I can also come to you. I can do group self-defense. I can do group trainings and stuff like that. Love it. Awesome. I'll, uh, yeah, well, I'll send you the, uh, the video of this, uh, we'll, we'll get it all posted for this Friday and then I'll send you the clips as well. Awesome, man. Wow. They went by really quick. <laughs> yeah, I did. Thanks for tuning into this episode of mindset. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate and review us on Apple podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support helps us bring you more inspiring content and ents and expert insights. Join our community on social media at mind.sep on Instagram, at mind-sep on YouTube, and visit our website, Alexander Muir, that's Amazon Mike, U-I-R dot com forward slash blog for more exclusive resources and updates. Until next time, keep optimizing your mind and body and see you in the next episode.